What's up everybody? So about a week ago Netflix dropped a new documentary. It's about a group of people that are allegedly in a cult that is also a management company slash church. It focuses a lot on a group of dancers, one of those dancers specifically, and that is Miranda Derrick. Now she has come out for the first time really since this documentary has aired and issued a statement. She issued it in her Instagram stories and uh, I have it here on my phone so I'm gonna go over it. Also the management company 7M issued a statement yesterday as well. Both of these are from yesterday. Here's what Miranda Derrick had to say on uh, her involvement in this alleged cult management company slash church. Hey everyone, just wanted to hop on here and say that I've seen the documentary. I want to start by saying that I appreciate the concern that has been expressed for my well-being. Due to pending litigation in which I am a plaintiff in a defamation lawsuit, it is not appropriate for me to comment on specific allegations, though I will state that I do not condone abuse in any way. I cannot speak for anyone else but myself. I love my mom, dad, and Melanie, and they will forever be a part of my life. The truth is we don't see eye to eye at this time. I believe that this documentary is a one-sided story. I gave my life to Jesus Christ in 2020 and asked my family for some space in the very beginning to collect my thoughts and process my new walk I wanted to take with God. I also told my sister that I wanted to continue a Wilking Sisters social media page. She logged me out of our account and when I asked for access back, she denied my request. So I had no other choice but to start my own account and pursue my own career. I still have yet to receive access into our account. My family did didn't honor the space I asked for, and I saw a different side of them I've never seen before. Honestly, it made me mad, frustrated, and annoyed that they were being so overbearing and chaotic. In 2020, I went to Michigan to visit my family for Christmas. My papa was taken to the hospital due to medical issues. We got phone... We... We got a phone call saying that he had a short time before he was going to pass. Melanie and I drove to the hospital to say our last goodbyes. Before we went into the hospital to do so, I started to pray for our papa in the car and Melanie got offended angry with me and told me to stop and to never pray around her. Our papa passed away that day. Fast forward about a month and a half. Melanie and I are in LA and we're about to head back to Michigan for our papa's funeral. I was at a place with my family where I felt like I was being harassed. My parents and sister are not religious. They immediately called me going to church twice a week, a cult. I felt that if I went back for the funeral, they would try to keep me there so and not let me come back to LA. So I told my family that I would not be going to Michigan and that I wanted to move in and begin my life with James. To keep it simple, I did not want to be around them at that time because I felt threatened by them. I have been getting together with them over the past couple of years to make amends, move on, and work things out as a family. This documentary has created a further challenge between us as I work to overcome this public attack. No one likes to be portrayed as they're brainwashed, not in control of their own life, shell of herself, human trafficked daughter, sister, when that just isn't the truth. I will add, I would have preferred that my family's circumstances remain private. I'm forced and feel like I have no other choice but to defend myself because of all of this. I can't convince anyone to believe anything. I am just a woman trying to live my life. I am not a victim. I am not in any harm. I am not being abused. I've never asked my family or anyone else to help me in any way. Respectfully, what I choose to do with my life is up to me. As I take time to process and reflect on this situation, I would appreciate your continued support. 
Thank you, Miranda Derrick. Now, the management company issued this statement just a short time ago as well, 7m.films on Instagram. The Netflix docuseries is a slanderous work of fiction born from a failed extortion attempt and for the sole purpose of gaining fame and fortune. Two years ago, Melanie P-R-I-S-C-Y-L-L-A Lee and E-L-I-S-H a. Lee and their co-conspirators launched a smear campaign to defame Robert Shin, his family, and his business associates after Mr. Shin did not, did not give in to Lee's extortion demands. Despite sworn statements from co-conspirators that confirmed the scheme by Ms. Goldman, Ms. Lee, to... To spread widespread lies, Netflix recklessly provided a global platform to peddle a false narrative that is at the center of an ongoing litigation. We will continue to pursue all legal remedies available to stop the spread of salacious lies and expect to be fully vindicated in court. So that's what 7M had to say about it. Um, it's... You know, there, there's always two sides to every story. There's one side, there's the other side, and the truth is generally somewhere in the middle. But you would assume, and again, this isn't always the case, you would assume whoever made that documentary felt they had enough proof going forward to air it on Netflix, and Netflix would assume you would think they did their research to air the documentary uh, so that they wouldn't get suit. It's so easy if you put something out there that is not factual in any way, you know you're going to get sued. You know there's going to be litigation brought against you. So, and there are a bunch of people, not just the dancers, there's a bunch of people that are coming out saying the same stories, saying the same things that, that, that happened to them while they were involved with Robert Shin and his company, uh, his church. He is being accused currently of sexual assault by a few people as well. And nobody has come out and said anything from the people that are still involved with him about having to give 70% of their income to this church. Even if you are there, and it's not a cult, and uh, you're having a great time, you're living up your life, you're dancing, how is it okay to make $100 and then give this church $70 of that 100 That makes absolutely no sense to me. That is not okay. Um, even, even if they're doing it of their own free will, it makes absolutely no sense to me of how they think giving 70% of their income to this church, to this person, is okay. And why are they doing it? That's a big question that I have. And that's a big question that nobody that is still involved with this church slash management company uh, has come out and talked anything about. Only the people that left are talking about it. It's an extraordinarily sad situation either way that all of these people that left experienced that in their time there and that there's still possibly people there experiencing the same thing. Maybe people like Miranda haven't experienced it and she's only talking about herself. Also, a lot of people are thinking that this is just the church behind Miranda making her post these things, making her say these things because, you know, they're trying to protect the alleged cult. But what do you think? Let me know. Leave some comments below. I hope you're having a good day and I will see you again soon.